What's going on everybody? It's your boy Dak908 aka the Dig Dug himself. First and foremost, let me get this right off the bat. This is um, post commentary. That means, if you, if you don't understand, is that all my live LP, well all my LPs, excuse me, are, are live. So you can get my live reaction as things happen and things like that. Uh, but when I recorded this entire session, this 45 minute session, I had my microphone muted. And I didn't know, so after I did the entire thing, I looked down and I was like, yo, it wasn't recorded. And I, and I, I debated, I really debated. I debated whether to just upload the video game, the, the gameplay raw, but then it would leave out a lot of emotion and things like that. Or if I should do post commentary, I was like, I could do post commentary, but it's 45 minutes. I have to sit here for 45 minutes and ramble about God knows what. Um, I guess I could talk about like the rank battle in the, in the new DLC, whatever they came off of Splatoon, mixed in with a couple other things, so I guess we could do that while talking about what's happening on the screen here. Now, um, first let me talk about what's gonna, ha what's gonna happen on the screen. Now, I I showed a lot of character in in this entire episode here. I, I try to change up the way I do LPs or just live commentary in general when I started doing this Splatoon series here. I started feeling a bit more uh, energetic. Because I'm, no I'm normally a bit monotone and relatively stoic when, when I do my, my live commentary. It's because, for one reason or another, I'm just, I, I've never been really good at doing live commentary. You know what I mean? It just never really came off the same way. I can do post commentary because I feel of it as if it's like, like a, a DJ's role on like an AM radio station or something like that. I can fill that void better than I could live commentary. I'm just not that good with it. I've been doing post commentary ever since I started this whole YouTube thing and not necessarily been really good at live commentary. I mean, I've done quite a few live streams and I've done you know, a couple of LPs. I want to say a couple by by actually saying a couple. I think only two. I won't, well, actually only completed just the Bayonetta 2 LP. I attempted to do uh, quite a few LPs. I got pretty far with my Majora's Mask LP, but I've actually yet to finish that one. Um, maybe one day I'll finish it and I'll probably finish it on the 3DS since Majora's Mask 3D came out and I want to find reasons to use my 3DS capture card and that, that'd be a really good reason there to uh, to do it but um, one thing I will point out is that since I've tried getting better at these uh, commentaries I want to say I found myself a nice little niche uh, with uh, these Splatoon commentaries I, I really liked the direction in which I was going with them um, it felt a bit more informative and you know a whole lot more relaxed you know so I'm, I'm kind of glad I, I found, like I said, that little niche, that little something to make me feel good uh, when I do these commentaries. So that way, the commentary itself can appeal to a wider audience. You know, I'm not necessarily changing myself, I'm not trying to trying to be something I'm not, because I'm I am this person. You know what I mean? It's just like being anything that you would normally be, minus a couple things that would obscenities. You know, just just get rid of the obscenities. Get rid of the, the, the completely over the top, like madness, when you, you know, not when you say you're trying to be hype, or when you're hype, you know what I mean? You know, be a bit more, uh, have a bit of self control, and meet with a bit of self control, and you know, a bit of, you know, knowledge and, and fun times just to be had, have pretty much related to my Splatoon LP so far. So, what does all this mean? Well, it means nothing, it just means that when it comes down to, you know, just to, just to be serious about stuff, especially when it comes to a game like Splatoon, and it being relatively family friendly and things like that. I, I know a lot of people are playing Splatoon, a lot of us are actually older that are playing Splatoon, but you know, young people play as well. And I understand Nintendo took out the voice chat for, you know, the vulgar reasons in which, you know, the internet actually lives. And I told myself, you know what, even though I don't 100% agree with the fact they took out voice chat, they could have left it available through the parental controls. Like, by default, have it actually deactivated, and then you have to go through credit controls to initiate the voice chat, so that way, you know, uh, the younger guys cannot have voice chat at all, and the older people can have the voice chat if they so fit. Um, they could have done it like that, but it's, it's totally fine. Anyway, I'm following with their tradition. I'm, I'm trying to keep uh, an open mind, a relatively open mind when I come to make these things. Be a bit uh, more more under control when I do my commentary because a lot of times if you see me in my live stream I get extremely hyped sometimes you know and it, it's, it's not there's no difference between me being hyped post or pre uh, post or live commentary 
It's just that, you know, when things are happening live, I, I tend to be a relatively close character. Um, I have a lot of fun, I show a lot of energy and things like that, so I decided that, you know, when it com comes down to do these post commentaries for Splatoon, because it's an LP for a game geared towards uh, a younger generation, I wasn't going to be all like that, because recently, my youngest nephew, he experienced, I guess you could say, the magic that is YouTube. You know, because we have, we have a smart TV, and he likes watching LPs. Um, currently, he's watching... A uh, an Ice Age, I think Ice Age two, or Ice Age three. Can't remember which which one it is. They have a couple of those movies. But he's watching an Ice Age LP uh, from a guy. Now, at first, I was a bit skeptical because I know I know how YouTube is. I mean, I've been doing YouTube for like s six years now. At the look, the new YouTube for six years, and um, I, I know I know what YouTube is, was like. But uh, this guy, I don't really don't really know his name. He's um, he's from the UK. That's from what I can uh, surmise. He's a pretty stand-up guy and I was like you know yeah I'll let my nephew watch him I mean he's, he's loved it you know he, the my people they watch my videos sometimes so I was like you know what I want to I want to look out for the you know the, the younger generation because they, again like they'll, they'll be watching my videos maybe maybe not don't really know it's up in the air so I wanted to keep I want to keep it relatively uh, PG or just G in general so um, with all of that being said I don't know what I'm gonna do with this post commentary. I want to keep it the same vibe, but I have to I have to come off the dome with a whole bunch of topics, things like that. But uh, just know that's my live commentary, especially for Splatoon, uh, the LP anyway. If you've yet to oh, I forgot this part was kind of tricky. If you've yet to check him out, they're they're a bit more laid back and not not, not really laid back, but just toned down. It's it's not incredibly stupid hype and it's not insanely over the top. It, it's it's pretty good. I react naturally to the situations as opposed to, you know, um, overhyped where you just try to get a reaction and sound weird or funny so that the audience can be like, yo, look at him getting all funny and whatnot. No, I'm just I'm just keeping hundred percent, keeping it real. But um, Splatoon, okay? All, all that all those weird things inside Splatoon. Now, let me let me talk about what I was thinking here. Um, I thought that these little sprayer things were sentient beings beings meaning I thought they literally knew what was going on as things was going on I thought they was out to get me but I uh, soon learned that that, that that was not actually the case but there is the the bigger puzzle at the end here where um, there's a bunch of them and I, they gave me a lot of trouble now at this part right here I was just going around and then I was turning the camera to get a better view of the area and I saw that platform down there and I was like yo let's go and check that out um, I decided to be a bit more not necessarily open-minded, but I start to use my eyeballs a bit more when um, playing Splatoon, especially for these secret areas, because th this is a Nintendo game. What I've learned is that Nintendo will introduce a new mechanic, this is coming directly from the Legend of Zelda series, they will introduce a new mechanic, and if there's, a, if there's secrets to be had within said level, 9 times out of 10, you can get that secret within that level using the said new mechanic. And the new mechanic, so to speak, was these uh, sprayers right here. So I knew, like, kicking around the sprayers, the sprayers were going to be guarding something. Now that was a, a relatively roundabout way of picking up the, the secret there, the, uh, the scroll. But it still followed, you know, true the technique. Uh, the rest of the video, you'll see me do the same thing. I'll take note to a, a new, particularly new technique or mechanic that they implemented within the level alone. And I, you know, keep an eye out for instances in which I could use said technique to pick up the, the scroll for that area. Um, what else did I just say now? Well, since I got all that out the way, this level is relatively okay, you know. The the one thing I got stumped on, I did get stumped on, stumped on the puzzle up here. Not right, right here, but later at the far edge over there where there's like five sprayers. And I didn't know exactly what I was looking for. I was just going in circles. I didn't know that there was an Octarian with a key. Uh, that you have to spray down. I never saw him up until randomly at just one potluck opportunity where he just showed himself. I'm like, oh look, there's a guy right there. He has a. Key. I'm guessing he had a key or something. He was just an enemy, so I had, I had to deal. I had to deal with him. I had to give him the juice. But uh, let, let, me, let me take a, a quick swig of this here. This, this beverage in front of my hand right here. I decided to get me a beverage. Uh, some what is this exactly? This is lemon ginger uh, tea. It's um. It's ginger, it's our ginger root that uh, that I bought from the store, and um, some lemon that 
also bought from the store. I decided to do it myself because I know you can get it from the tea bag, whatever. But I normally like brew. I used to brew um, all my tea water with with a bit of ginger. It's good for the digestive system and whatnot. So I decided to just do that same thing here. But give me a second. I'll take a nice swig of this. Still my throat getting a bit parched. I want to keep this commentary up. Man, we got quite a while to go. So just give me a hot moment. I think we're only ten minutes in, maybe even less. Okay, so at this point, I really thought they were sentient because when they see you, they have the exclamation point above their head, much like they do in Monster Hunter or Metal Gear Solid, for that matter. But, again, I didn't really know what I was, like, looking for. I was just going around in circles, or squares, I guess you could say, um, look for anything that, that popped up that could allow me to uh, progress, and I was getting a bit frustrated, you know what I mean? It, it, was, it wasn't a bad puzzle. Just, I guess I didn't read what the guy, what the Captain Cuttlefish said, and I didn't know exactly what I was supposed to be looking for, until I don't know where it popped up, and the thing that got me was, why did it pop up, why did the Octarian pop up, like, totally randomly, you know what I mean? I wish it was, um, something that I was actually looking for. Now, I wasn't sure if, if the line that was drawn away from my body was supposed to be directing towards the Octarian, or just if, uh, one of those... Sprayers, I think they're called flutters or something like that. I'm, not, I'm calling them sprayers. Or if one of those sprayers actually acknowledged my presence, and actually knew that I was around, I wasn't entirely sure about that. So I was just doing my best to find whatever, whatever I could find. Maybe I missed something until I saw him right there. I was like, "Yo, there he is! Don't play me!" It took me a minute. I, I was, I was actually getting relatively mad, real stuff, because I couldn't actually find. It. I know, I didn't know what I was looking for. So anyway. Not this level out. I mean, it, it wasn't none too big. There's another level in here where I actually die out. I wasn't. I was trying to be slick or fly, if you will, and I paid the piper because I kept jumping into a situation where I didn't properly assess the situation. You know what I mean? I just kind of jumped in, um, being reckless. It's the closest thing I, I, I can say to uh, to it. You know what I mean? But uh, one thing you have to do, guys, uh, one thing I did learn, shout outs to people who, want, who wanted to let me know some stuff, is that the scroll, if you get all the scrolls in the single player mode, you will actually have more weapons to attain in the multiplayer mode. Now, I don't have all the scrolls. As you can see, there's a huge chunk of scrolls missing because I didn't pick up a single scroll from the second area. Uh, but I'm sure that there's some scrolls there that can actually lead to some more weapons I've yet to acquire, but I think there's two more levels after this one, and there's, there's bound to be weapon scrolls there. Now, picking up the weapon scrolls, they're not they're not always new weapons. The one you get from this area though is a new weapon. It's the Aerospray MG slash Aerospray RG, I believe. In my opinion, the most popular gun uh, on multiplayer. Okay, I mean I see I don't see any other gun more often. Than it. I mean, it is definitely, uh, it is definitely the most most popular weapon online. What I will say, when if a character does not have the aerospray MG or RG, they can have literally anything else. I mean, I've seen everything. I've seen everything from splatter shots to splatter shot juniors to um, uh, blasters to uh, 0.52 gallons, uh, 0.96 gallon of. Uh, Blasters, just all, all kind of stuff. I'm, I'm glad there's a lot of variety. Heck, I even see quite a few sniper rifles, even though they're a bit unwieldy that people still tend to use them. And, and I kid you not, I, I don't think I've seen a bad uh, sniper rifle user yet. I know, I know most people who, who know me from the Call of Duty days. I was always, uh, I was always a man about my sniper rifles, and it was the whole precision uh, thing. The fact that you can just use precision, act, your true precision and accuracy to best your opponent. Uh, no matter what actually weapon you had, um, I was I was really down for that. I was totally down for that, and that's when I noticed there was something over there. I was like, "Yo, what's that?" Because I saw a little piece of ink that was just floating in the midair, and I was like, "Yo, there's something over there. I gotta go hop onto that." But me personally, I haven't really used the uh, the chargers or the sniper rifles, whatever you, call, whatever you want to call them, too often. Uh, due in part that I um, I'm just trying to level up on multiplayer. And sure, the sniper rifle and everything is cool. Trust me, I love playing with them. But they're not really good for covering ink. And when you get experience by the amount of ink you cover, as opposed to uh, Call of Duty's ways, which would normally be kills, 
um, you kind of want to stick with whatever gets you the most ink coverage. So for the longest time, I've been using Splattershot Juniors, even though they're not my favorite weapon type or my not, excuse me, they are my favorite weapon type. You know, shooter type uh, weapons within this game, but they're not they're not they're not necessarily my favorite weapon. I've been using them anyway because they cover a lot of area. Anything with a fast firing, uh, fast firing wide angle, uh, you no know, trajectory, pretty much covers quite a bit of ink. And so I've been using that for a very long time to, to do most of my damage. So I've, I've been happy with the results for it and whatnot. So my tip to you, randomly, I don't know why I'm going to give out a tip, a random multiplayer tip. If you're wondering, yo, how can I level up faster, use the Splattershot Jr. or even better, use the Arrow Spray MG or an RG. Depending on what level you are and your progression within the, the single player. Uh, like I said, you get the Arrow Spray MG or RG. I think both, actually. If you complete the third level of the, well, the third area, excuse me, the third area of the single player. So, I'm currently on the third area, area of the single player. I picked it up later. I haven't really used the Aerospray RG yet because um, the same day I, I recorded this, I had to go to work. And then when I went to work, um, I had to go to work the following day really early. So, I didn't even go home after work that day to play more of this. And when I woke up, I didn't play more anyway, but I knew that after work, they would be implementing the the new rank mode and the 80, the 80, the N85 Zapper. Now, I did know the, the way it actually worked, the N85 Zapper, but it is now my favorite weapon in the game because it is everything I wanted from the splatter shot and then some. Okay, I just want splatter shot to shoot faster with a bit more range. I didn't really care about the damage. But it works like the splatter shot that I love. I mean, I love the splatter shot. It is probably uh, straight up hard knuckle, bear down, only good wording and whatnot. My favorite weapon in the game, uh, the splatter shot. But the N85 Zapper was just a better splatter shot. I couldn't have been happier, you know. But that aside, I totally forgot what I was going with. I was just talking, you know, just just talking, just to keep it, keep the uh, the conversation piece going. But um, where where was I? I'm trying to remember what I was talking about. I think I was talking about using sniper rifle or something like that. Uh, then I went on to Splattershot Juniors. No, I was talking about weapon variety. Right, okay. I'm, I'm getting getting way, way out of way here. Uh, but there's good weapon variety. I mean, like I said, I see a lot of different weapons from all of the people. All, all the people. Granted, you will still see you some... Okay, the, the two most popular. Easy. Uh, rollers, it doesn't matter the roller, it's, it's just a roller, okay? You're, normally people like using the, the Kraken roller, because when you hit your super, you turn into an invincible Kraken. So you will be getting your roll on, and you think when someone is getting the better of you, BAM! Turn into the Kraken, and then, you know, rawr, come through and give them some business. So, I want to say that one's the more popular one. I've seen a couple people pull out the, dyna uh, the Dynamo roller. Um, which has an insane range on its little splash, and it's it's, it's just a, a really good. I don't really know the, all the mechanics of the dy Dynamo Roller, but um, it's harder for me to actually combat, you know, if that makes any sense. So it's obviously better in one aspect or another to the uh, standard uh, roller, but it's all, it's all good and fun, I guess you could say. But, you know, like I said, RG's and rollers or well, aerosprays and rollers you're gonna see those more often than not but if you're not gonna see those you're gonna see pretty much any anything else I mean anything else you'll see people with like anything like n name a blaster they got it they'll have dual squelchers jet squelchers um splatter shot pros uh, rapid blasters blasters anything they'll just have anything I'm glad the weapon variety is so high just people just picking stuff just because they want it now I will say that I normally would do the same thing but like I said I'm just trying to get I'm trying to quickly get to level 20 and once I get to level 20 I don't really care you know especially when it comes to like rank mode or something like that I won't I won't really care too much uh, because I'll probably this is the level where I actually die out I mean this this level is it took me a long time to do because I was being dumb but um, in rank mode, since I have, I've actually have not played rank mode yet, I told myself that uh, a lot of the weapons that's actually in this game was geared towards actually uh, killing people as opposed to covering terrain. Like the splatter shot is definitely geared towards, you know, I want to say killing people because um, it's more accurate. 
you know, its, uh, it's stream of ink is more straightforward. So you don't have that wide angle. In order for you to actually cover a whole lot, you have to s swing your camera around. Where the splatter shot can just do that for fun, just easily without even trying. So I want to say I, I want I wanted to use like something like the the dual squelcher. The jet squelcher was cool, but it didn't shoot fast enough for, for my liking. You know what I mean? I'm I'm fairly accurate, fairly not not really accurate, not even like damn good accurate. I'm fairly, but fairly means I, I I tend to do uh, more kills than I do the deaths every time I get on get on the get on the battlefield. Now the times where I do do more I do do the times where I do indeed have more deaths than um. Than, than kills is those really bad matches that you can't do nothing about. But like I said, I like to think I'm fairly accurate with the gun. So um, I forgot what I was going with that. Where I was going with that? Hmm. Oh, I was gonna use the jet squelcher because it's a accurate long range weapon, and I I like accuracy. I like accuracy over uh, you know firepower for the most part. So I want to use the the more accurate weapon. But in a bit of addition to you know understanding my weakness I went with the most accurate fast firing gun that they probably had at the time which was the dual squelcher and I want to say that's probably the N zapper the, N the, N the N85 zapper because um, it doesn't have as much range but it has the faster fire rate so I gave it up to that anyway th that's, that's, that's my opinion on what weapon I want to use when it comes to rank I'm sure that rank is gonna be totally different than what I expect it to be because I've yet to actually play it. I mean, Ranked has been out for two days and I've yet to play it. Because every time I'll go to play, play Splatoon, you know, couldn't play Ranked because I have to go to work. When I come home from work, I'm really tired and I decide to stream. And when I, when I stream, I want to play with the people within the stream. So we do the, the join friend turf war thing, which is fun. Nothing wrong. Turf war is, the, is, you know, the bee's knees. I mean, it's the ankles. It's the kneecaps. All right. It's the whole, the whole lower body area. You know, with the, the feet and whatnot, but um, I've yet I've yet to try out the rank. I have a lot of friends say that rank is okay. I mean, they say they'd rather stick to like turf four and stuff like that. I'm talking about my homie Deadly there, Sir Deadly. So I don't know. It's it's up in the air. I don't know how I really feel about it, but if, I mean, if it's dope, it's dope. If not, it's 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 whatever. We'll 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 see. We'll definitely see. Uh, well, I will definitely see once I actually get a get a hold of it. Now I die three times right here the same exact way three times I kid you not I, I'm, I'm not even I'm, I'm not even I'm not even exaggerating I die three times the same exact way I try to be fly and in like ink and jump at the same time I die three times the same way it's, it's annoying and I think I die three times another way or I die twice this way or three times another way some other way I don't know this this, this level was dumb I had to do it completely over twice I mean one, two, this is the third stage. Yeah. Yeah, I spend the most time here. I think I spent like 12 minutes right here. And boom, dead. <laughs> but, uh, so far, I want to say the most player is pretty balanced, pretty well balanced. It's fun. Things is dope. Um, good, good job, Nintendo. Good job. All I know is that for Splatoon 2, or if they just say forget it, DLC. Um, run it. Just, just, get, just give me more of what you got right here. Give me more of what you already have. I'll take everything you have right here. I just need more of it. And if they follow through with that uh, theory, then, then hell yes. Because I will say that at first the game felt a bit empty. You know what I mean? Like it, it's, it's a good game. There's some content to be had, but I feel like it's just a bit emptier than I would have liked for it to be. You know. Don't get me wrong, like I said, it's, it's a great game. It is a, it's a phenomenal game. I just feel like that there could have been a bit more content in there. Like, when I see a game like this, a game that has incredible promise, a game that performs admirably on all fronts, but falls short due to the lack of content, the only game I can really... Well, there's quite a few games nowadays because it seems to be literally the model. The model nowadays is to make 70 to half will set 50 to 70 percent of your game release it and say the rest is coming through dlc and patches and i kid you not like that that's what they do like i'm looking directly at destiny and killer instinct for the xbox one Kill thing is killer instinct for the xbox one it's not their fault microsoft was like we need this thing 
now. And it was like, my man, we only got like four characters. It was like, I don't care. Make it make it playable right now, and then make it. So, that's what they did. I, can, I could kind of understand their plight with it. But Destiny, for shame. That's all I gotta say. For shame. Activision wants that dollar dollar bill, y'all. But, um... Luckily, for Nintendo's sake, this all this DLC and whatnot is, is free. It's coming post-launch. I wonder how much of the content they're actually going to have for us post-launch because uh, the game is amazing. It would be way better with more content, and hopefully Nintendo can deliver on that side of the ball and actually give us a whole lot more content than expected. Because I, I really want this game to do well. I mean, um, I've just seen some, some stats from uh, Wii U sales in Japan. And they sold, I think, normally about, they sold almost three times as many Wii U consoles and they, over the weekend than they normally would have done. They, norm, they normally sell about 7K uh, Wii U consoles a week. And they sold about, they sold 17 to 18K. That right there was stupid. That was the dumbest thing I ever did in my life. That was stupid. And I died. And I went splat. So I was like, you know what? Jump back in here. Play Thomas for suckers. And I knocked all the way through in one try. Cause I stopped trying to be fly. I mean, I did the whole stage in, in pretty quick time. Like, kid, you know, I was just running past stuff. I was just like, go. But Nintendo has a good thing going here. Keep it up. So I gotta say, keep it up. Give us plenty of content. Give us plenty of maps. Plenty of weapon variety. Give us more. Yeah, give us more game modes. More maps. Uh, guns are pretty good, but yo, want to give us more guns? Go ahead. More power to you. You know, what I mean, I, I'm not gonna stop from giving us more guns. But we need more maps. We currently have only six maps. We need more maps. Uh, in my opinion, we need like 10 more maps, you know, 10 or 8 or a relatively big number more of maps. Um, e an even number of maps, mind you, because, you know, just it's weird with an odd number of maps. Because it was 5 at launch and then now there's 6. Uh, that was close. But we need more maps. I'm, I'm cool with them um, giving us more weapons, whatever. We need more maps. We definitely need more game modes. Because right now we only have two game modes. We have Splat Zone, I believe it's called, the ranked multiplayer map. And we have Turf War. Turf War is, ama is an amazing game mode. I can see myself playing Turf War until the cows come home. It'll be just like me playing Domination or Team Deathmatch in Call of Duty. Uh, actually, Domination is just like the only game mode I play in Call of Duty. I play other game modes every now and then, but if if you were to guess what game mode I'm playing in Call of Duty, it's, it's Domination. So Turf War is fun. I can definitely play that for a really long time. Um, Splat Zone, like I said, I've yet to try. I wonder what it tastes like, but we need more game modes. I'll say get, give us like five more game modes, or five game modes in total. Uh, I'll be cool with that. Give us some, um, you know, just give us a bit of variety. Let, give, us, give us another little play around game mode, kind of like Turf War, where, you know, just play around and have fun. Give us some competitive game modes, things like that, because a lot of people want to do this thing competitive, and I don't doubt them. Well, I don't, I don't hate them for that, because it's... Is as fun and cute and colorful as this game is, it can get pretty competitive. You know, already with the lack of voice chat, people like hardcore people who don't really care too too much about like their ideals, uh, Nintendo's ideals have been using Skype for forever because you know Nintendo has almost never had a game with uh, voice chat or like a part. It has never had a party chat feature, so people like. The Xbox guys and the PlayStation 4 guys, not 3, but the PlayStation 4 guys, they now don't care if a game has built-in voice chat or not. I mean, uh, Destiny did not have voice chat in, um, when you did, like, strike missions or whatever, but it didn't matter, because you would normally do strike missions and things like that with a group of friends, and if you were doing it with a group of friends, odds are you had those people in a party, you know what I mean? So didn't really bother them too much but since we lack that party feature it's nice for us to have a bit of voice chat but again like I said the people who really care they aren't using the voice chat from a game they're on Skype okay so for those who use Skype we don't care but those guys are on Skype they they have the strategy okay they got the strategy mapped out it's like yo two guys up front two guys in the back or it's like hey man we're losing some face over here somebody uh, super jump excuse me I forgot the name of the term Super jump over here, help us out, you know, something like that, you know. Those are the guys you gotta watch out. Those are, those are the, the, the hardcore guys. That's the competitive game right there. And I would like to actually do a little something like that. Um, I potentially had a squad lined up before Splatoon launched, but, um, you know, m money is always a problem. And 
we couldn't necessarily get the whole squad going like from the jump like we wanted but it, it's okay i mean you know people got stuff to worry about people got money to you know to not necessarily dictate their lives but they got money to, to put in other places that actually dictate their lives like you're not gonna spend money on a video game when the light bill is due you know what i mean Gotta have a bit more responsibility than that. Hold on, guys. Let me take another sip of the tea. My throat is extremely parched. But when I do, I'm gonna talk to you about this level right here. Alright? Whew. Mm. But this, I died right there. Yes, I died to a computer Altarian. This is my favorite multiplayer map. Real talk. As of right now, I they can give me this map all day, every day back to back to back to back wouldn't care would not care i love this map this is i forget what it's called it's like ball eye skate park or something like that not i can't remember but this is my favorite map i normally have a strategy when uh i'm on this map but i won't tell you i'll probably tell you maybe not in this this comes area right here but i'll probably tell you my strategy for this map uh, it's not a very you know advanced strategy it's just I've had the most luck using this strategy no, no matter where I'm at. If we're, if we're losing, I, I'll just employ the same strategy and with it I can actually gain uh, better positioning for my team and again it's up to them to actually capitalize on the position in which I gave them. So I, I will normally do good on this map. I almost never have a bad game on this map personally. Will I lose on this map? Absolutely because you know this is a team sport, um, there's no I in team. Even though it can be a really good eye, but that one eye ain't going to beat all everybody. I mean, one person is not going to out-splat four people. You know what I mean? Like, I'm sorry. Maybe that, that can be a thing. Maybe four people who are just four really bad people, and you have one really good person, can out-splat four people. But odds are you're going to you're gonna hold that. Okay? You're going to hold that. You're not gonna You're not going to beat four people. Most of the time. Anyway, I love this map. I actually like the fact that they incorporated, um, you know, simulations is the best thing I can, uh, I almost died right here. But simulations is the best thing, the best way I can actually put this, of the real maps. Where you'll fight a group of Octarians in a, mul in a multiplayer-esque type setting. And I thought that was, like, really dope. And they actually implemented, you know, multiplayer maps. Now, there was the first map that you actually did this on. Is not a multiplayer map, and I'm wondering, yo, my man, um, are we gonna get that map? You know what I mean? Because true, true to form, most multiplayer maps from most online shooters, if they have a single player campaign, come from the single player campaign. You know, like I want to say that this, this map right here was was built exclusively for multiplayer. I mean, even in the quote unquote single player, it is quote unquote the same exact map. But uh, you, you can see you can see where I'm getting from with this. A lot of times, since the map itself is already within the game in single player form, they'll modify said map and then just uh, throw it into the multiplayer. So maybe we'll see a few more multiplayer maps that are from the single player or something that looks like it's from the single player, or whatever. But um, what I'm doing here is that I'm looking for the scroll because there's always a scroll. You know what I mean? Like there's always a scroll. I'm looking for the scroll. I'm looking all over the place. Um, they've no normally been in boxes, so I'm looking for a box. That's why I've been shooting all the boxes. So I'm running around looking for the box. I do eventually find it. It just took me a lot longer to find it. I don't know why it took me so long. I mean, it was just the one place I actually have yet to actually go. But it took me a long time to find it. But like I said way earlier, do your part. Find the scrolls. I mean, when you find the scrolls, you'll get the blueprints. You even learn a bit about the story. And the story itself is actually pretty pretty good. But even though they don't explain it through natural storytelling, whereas, you know, they talk with cutscenes and action and things like that, they uh, convey it through, you know, hidden documents that you have to find yourself, which is uh, kind of weird, but it, it still works out. Um, pretty interesting story. I would have liked to see seen the split Splatoon with the more engaging single player. I, I can only say that it's... There it is, right there. It's not super engaging right now because I like I, I think there's only five levels. I'm only three in. It could get pretty interesting later. I don't know. Odds are it's probably not the case, but um, let's just say that Splatoon 2 
Since the formula and the groundwork has already been laid out, I just want them to focus on the single player. I know it can be an, an amazing experience because, like I said, the multiplayer, we got that on lock, okay? Just gotta hold that, that single player down. And hopefully, um, it performs a bit more admirably. I'm not saying the single player is bad now. Just saying that it could, it could absolutely be better. Anything in life can be done better. In my honest opinion. And here I am, this close to the end of the video, and I, I totally ran out of stuff to talk about. Totally, in in, in, in totally, I've, I've run out of everything to talk about. I mean, like, jeez, I don't know what else to say. I mean, we have two levels left. We have this one here, and we have the boss level, and I've pretty much exhausted everything I had in one go. And I'm kind of glad I did such such an amazing feat. I mean, I'm looking at the I'm looking at the video speed here. Well, the audio, uh, the audio track here, and there's not a single instance, except when I sip some tea, where I've paused or done anything like that. So it's been constant me, constantly me in your ear, getting this flavor in your ear. I think I die here too. I mean, these these missions here, yeah, there, there we go, there we go. These missions here with the with this ink strike, you know, enemy, are pretty tough. I mean, you have, you have to stand, you have to stay on your toes. You know what I mean? You can't sit around and pick your, you know, pick your route too well. You have to do it not necessarily on the fly, but you have to quick think. Quick, you have to think quick. What the heck? Quick think? You have to think quick and on your feet and react to it naturally. It's kind of hard to do. I'll, I'll, I'll admit. Sometimes I, I get caught up in the moment where I'll see the ink strike and I'm like, yo, gotta make a snap decision. I'm normally pretty good at making snap decisions. Um... Normally, when you have to do make those, when you do have to make those snap decisions, go for life. Okay, go for life. Don't get yourself in a situation where things can go real sour real quick. So, absolutely and emphatically, choose life in these uh, drastic situations. By choosing life, I mean save your skin. Like, even though like the ink strike was right there, I decided if I move, I can survive. And I did. And I picked up another. Whoa, this is a tough spot, I remember this. I'm just like, ugh! Had it not be had it not been for the armor, I would have died because those these Octarians are pretty accurate when they're shooting from the turrets and actually happen to handle the one who shoots the splat bombs and one with the ink strike. I mean it's a whole lot of stuff moving. It's a whole lot of damn moving parts, if you ask me. But jeez. Like I say guys, I have nothing else to say here. I really don't. I mean how much longer is left in this video? I think about 10 minutes. I, ca I can't really tell. I want to say 10. Wait, that's 5. Uh, give or take like 7 or 8 minutes, something like that. But I have not nothing else to say to you all. I've said all I said. I gave you my my opinions on the multiplayer. Balancing of the weapons. Uh, hell, I even talked about the voice chat thing. The, the thing that no one ever wants to talk about ever. But I talked about that. Um... Wow, that I'll change just walk right off the edge of the map. That's just insane. Well, guys, this is what I'm going to do for you because I don't want to be beat a dead horse and I have to get this thing done today. Um, I will just... I don't want to, but the fact that many of you probably won't even reach this far off, and if you actually reached all the way to the end here, that means you're, you're, you're a trooper, okay? You're definitely a trooper, and... Whoop, wow, that's, yeah, I, yeah, I inked down to hide, but, yeah, that, that, that was dumb. Okay, I turned to a skid, squid, not skid, I turned to a squid to hide from that ink strike and fell straight through the grate. That is, that is smart, that is the smart stuff, that, good job, GG. But, um, yeah, like I said, if you make it this far, then, wow, kudos to you, you don't really need to hear the, the last, like, seven minutes of this. Um, uh, but again, like, odds are people don't make it this far, because, let's get serious, LPs, who watches whole LPs? Okay, I'll take that back. This is a long video, so who watches extremely long video of an LP? Um, not, not entirely sure, but, cause I know everyone is, is trying to see the multiplayer, and I actually don't really have any multiplayer, uh, gameplay recorded, because, well, I don't know, I was really waiting until, like, level 20 to record gameplay, but I should be record. I should actually record online gameplay and save up a whole bunch of really good matches where I get like a high score or a whole, or a whole bunch of kills. I'm going off I'm going off uh, high scores and kills 
because that seemed to be the norm back in the day. So I'm trying to follow the same routine and do my best to get the highest number of kills and scores or whatnot. I should I really should have recorded. Cause I mean, we've had a couple of really good matches where it got stupid close. I wish I was recording it. This is the first time I ever played a game where I could have recorded and I never really recorded it. I mean, I played so much multiplayer, but I haven't recorded pretty much anything. And when I did record, I didn't really get anything you know, worthy to show, but um, I should really get on that. Uh, well, but here we go. Wow, I actually extended that longer than I thought. Let me just tell you what, 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 the, what the final boss is about, and then um, I'll cut it off, because my voice is getting extremely extremely tired i mean i've finished my tea i think this is a ball of water that i have over here but it's been on my desk for a couple of days now i'm not I'm not really trusting the ball of water i don't remember it being there like i, I remember seeing it but i don't remember putting it there because i never put anything in this position on my desk so i'm debating on actually drinking it i don't want to drink it i should probably not drink this but uh the final boss works like this he he will like roll out like Pokemon, and you have to obscure his path with your ink. So so long as you do that, you you, sh you should be okay. Dang, I can I should muscle through this. I should totally muscle through this because it's not too much video left. Should I do it? My throat is terribly dry. My tea is cold now. It's been sitting for like 40 minutes, but I don't know if you guys ever had ginger. I think I put a bit too much ginger in here, but ginger is actually like spicy, okay? It kind of, like in large amounts, it, it puts put a little spice on the back of your throat. You know what I mean? It's, it's, not, it's not the best thing. It's like really, really dry mouths. But anyway, this, this is how it works. You're gonna lay down, you can lay down your ink, right? He's going to stop eventually and roll out in front of you so what you want to do is you want to make him follow you and land in your ink okay if you have a whole lot of ink in the way he'll slow down to a uh, stop and you can shoot the uh the tentacle uh in front of him so um i think it took me a while to figure it out but i figured it out bam and i was like oh as soon as, I, as soon as that happened i figured what it would take to do i don't really understand how he fell into that ink right there i don't remember putting the ink there but it might have been the very first patch of ink that I ever put down but after that i figured it's out so what you want to do is even after he switches up the level and starts spinning um in correlation to you and him just make you a fat trail you know what i mean and in case it actually goes where well, he rotates in a manner in which it's actually a bit further down the way just put ink everywhere you feel me like I did just like I did that time around I put ink all over the place and he eventually had to come to me so he ran into the ink right there now I will say I thought I was in trouble when he changed up styles on me and he was rotating the platform but put that yeah right there put the ones down to where you, you can't actually keep ink on it so what I did for that was I put ink on on all of them that you could put the ink on and then try to stay uh, within the confines of you know where you need to put the ink Oh, he got away with that one. Oh, he, yeah, he barely got away with that. So I cleaned it up, had more ink, and I, I, I knew I was on to him now. All right. Here we go. Do I get him? I'm pretty sure I get him this time around. There we go. And curtains. Great job. Now you know how to beat the final, not the final boss. We now, now you know how to beat this boss. But without further ado, guys, I mean, we made it all the way through the, the video. I didn't think I was going to. I didn't want to, but I did anyway. I, I, I sat through it. I manned up, I manned it up, and we got the stuff, and we're good to go. With this sunken scroll here, I picked up the Aerospray RG slash MG, and became a threat on multiplayer, even though I have yet to actually use it, really. I think I used it once. But, uh, there we go with that. Anyway, guys, this has been your boy, Dak Nonaway, a.k.a. The Dig Dug himself. We're gonna cut it right here, and I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and the possibility... Actually, I spoke through this entire part right here. I said... I actually said what he said there. I used 
voice acting and everything. It was going to be a very good live commentary, but it just never was meant to be, unfortunately. Anyway, thank you all for coming through. And if you made it all the way through the video, put the word spaghetti in your comment if you made it all the way through the video because this is one hell of a long video and even me going through with the straight post commentary was one heck of a feat so thank you all for coming through today guys uh, maybe you'll see uh, another episode tomorrow but tomorrow I might re have to record it tomorrow I don't know if I'll record anything else today because I talked 45 minutes flat no pausing and my throat is really kind of dry and it kind of hurts a little bit. So, without further ado, I'm going to let you all go. It's been your boy, Dak Donaway, a.k.a. The Dig Dug himself. I will see you all real soon. If you like Monster Hunter, stay tuned to this channel for Monster Hunter as well. Because I actually need to upload this, uh, this last Monster Hunter video I have right here. And I hope to do that within the next coming two days or so. So, without further ado, you all take care. It's been your boy.